Welcome to the series Against All Odds, Crafting a Career in the Arts. According to Statistics Canada, around 19% of the population are living with some form of disability that affects their level of freedom, independence, or quality of life. Of that population, a percentage are invisibly disabled, which means they may look and act healthy, but are living with a chronic condition. Having an invisible disability could happen to anyone at any time and can include autoimmune diseases, brain injuries and strokes, chronic pain, mental or psychological disorders, among others. People with invisible disabilities may not be able to work a full-time schedule or may need a modified schedule based on how they feel. But having an invisible disability doesn't mean living your dream is completely impossible. In this series, we will share with you stories of invisibly disabled professional craft artists who work or sell their art in Edmonton. We have also included valuable community resources that are important for any artist who wants to begin their career. I'm Amy, an award-winning artist and filmmaker who is invisibly disabled. And together with my husband, Tanner, I will be sharing the stories of local artists with invisible disabilities. And I will take you to different places in the community to show you where support is available. It is our hope that with this series, anyone looking to begin their art career will know where the supports and resources exist in our community. We also hope if you are invisibly disabled, the stories of the artists included in this series will help you see how it is possible to have a career in the arts or inspire you to explore the artistic medium you have been curious about. In this episode, we are headed out to speak with a local store owner who will share with us her advice for artists looking to start a relationship with shops and boutiques. Next, we will be speaking with a not-for-profit about the importance of creating a business plan and the support available for entrepreneurs who may not have any support or someone to talk to about their business. My name is Deb and my store name is Where Fairies Live. So the store has been around for 25 years. I am actually the fourth owner of the store. I purchased the store from the previous owner eight years ago. The store is a pagan metaphysical store. We support people's quest into looking into the pagan spiritualities. We provide lots of supplies such as candles and incense and crystals, books. We do a variety of workshops and we also have special events. We have a selection of handmade items, both ones that we have purchased directly from the artists and other ones that are here on consignment. So we have handmade items such as wands, incense, pottery, jewelry, tarot decks. So if an artist is interested in having their items being sold in the store, they would need to contact me directly, preferably first by email with some pictures, and then we'd set up a meeting. When somebody applies to our store, I take a look at what they're offering, whether it fits in with our store, and whether it is duplication of what we already have. So I'm always looking for something to expand what we offer as opposed to um, offering multiples of similar items from different artists. We have both professional and beginner artists 
here in the store. It all depends on what they have to offer. New artists need to have really good pictures of their work. They need to research my store or whatever store they're going to put in to make sure that what they offer fits for that store. I've had people approach me to sell toy cars, which has nothing to do with the mandate of my store. And then we've had other artists who come in and they're willing to develop candle molds and candles and have taken off with their candle business. It's very important for a new artist to research the store that they want to put their items into. So they need to research the owner structure. Is it part of a chain? Is it a local owner? They need to research, is it a consignment? Do they buy it right out? And they need to take a look at what is that store offering? and how could they have something that expands what that store is offering and not necessarily duplicate what the store has already. Um, a consignment is where an artist places an item for sale in my store and no funds are exchanged upright. If the item sells, then usually for my store it's a 60-40 split so they would get 60 percent of the selling price and I would get 40 percent. If an item doesn't sell under you know within three months then it goes back to the artist. Consignment is good for providing a variety. It lets me know what kind of demand it is for that particular item. It also gives the artist flexibility in that they can come and change out their display at any time. They can put new things in there and they can take out the ones that are not selling. Sometimes an item will sell better at a market or a fair and other times in the store. The information that I'm looking for from an artist, or whether it's a consignment or buy them right out, is things like the cost, the selling price, what it's made from, and any of the backstory on that item. So how did they, how did she develop that candle? How does she make the candle? Things like that. The first thing is to research the store or booth boutique, including a site visit where they actually go out to a store, have a good feeling for whether that store is one that you want to work with or not, and then make sure that your items are unique. Well, the number one thing is to show up, do a cold call on a Saturday afternoon when the store is the busiest and expect that A, the manager is there on site or that they have time to talk to you. First off, to research both your craft and the
the stores that you're interested in. The second is to do markets and do social marketing to get a following for your work. And the third is to persevere. We're here in downtown Edmonton at the AWE or Alberta Women Entrepreneurs Office. In this episode, we're going to learn the importance of having a business plan. If you're just getting started out and you don't have a lot of supports or resources, associations such as the AWE are here to help. My name is Kieran Figu and I'm the program lead at Alberta Women Entrepreneurs. Our head office is located in Edmonton, Alberta. Alberta Women Entrepreneurs is a not-for-profit organization and we're dedicated to helping women start, build, and grow their businesses. We do this through a variety of offerings such as advising, skills and network development, and financing. We believe that our economies and communities are stronger when women are full participants in entrepreneurship. In order to help entrepreneurs create their own business plan, we offer both aspiring and existing entrepreneurs a monthly webinar series which they can register for free, which is a three-part series. In this series, we cover connections, tips, tools, and resources to help you create your own viable business plan. A business plan can be a very useful tool to help entrepreneurs move forward in their business with confidence. One of the things that it can do for you is help you organize your thoughts and get all of the functional areas of your business planned out and on paper. Just a process of uh, writing it out and outlining your planning is going to help you with your business plan overall. One of the main goals of having that business plan, however, is really to define those business goals that you have and outline how you're going to get to those goals. Another key benefit to having a business plan is it helps you communicate the merits of your business to outsiders such as lenders or investors or any other stakeholders in your business and really to help you obtain financing a lot more easily. There are quite a few relevant components that go into creating a viable business plan, but there are key components that are essential to get right as you attempt your business plan. One of those components in the business planning process is conducting effective market research. The next step in your business plan writing process is creating a marketing plan. This is where you outline your marketing strategy and determine the marketing activities that you're going to be using to reach your best customers. And then finally, you're going to create a financial plan, which includes cash flow forecasts along with income statement and balance sheet forecasts that will determine if you are going to have a viable business. And as you complete your business plan, the last part that you'll want to focus on is a financial plan. This will include financial statement forecasts and basically that's a way of saying you're going to show what kind of revenues that you're expecting in your business, what kind of sales, and what expenses that you're predicting that you're going to have in your business. And you're going to try to back this up with as much research as you can, but a lot of this is going to be forecasting what you anticipate happening in your business, and you're just communicating that to the reader. We currently also offer online training programs in the form of webinars and webinar series in which entrepreneurs can build their skill set for their business. If you're looking to find ways to grow your business and you need to develop your personal or business skills or even increase your connections, these programs are for you. Throughout the year, we offer various sessions on different business topics such as leadership, finance and accounting, marketing, sales, and digital transformation for your business. These are just some of the programs that we offer. 
Some of the main programs we offer include our Next Step to Success series, which is for Indigenous women entrepreneurs, as well as our Bold Leadership program, which is a program that will allow you to radically rethink your business with a digital lens. One piece of advice I have for entrepreneurs who are just starting out in their businesses is try to look at your business as a solution to a problem that currently exists in the market. If you look at your business through that lens, you'll always be trying to offer a value to the customer that you're intending to sell to. As you're figuring out how to start your business, a key question that you want to ask is, is there a market for what I'm doing? Are there people willing to pay for this product or service? And if so, how much are they willing to pay? If you're looking to just start up a business, some guidance that I can offer is always ask for help when you need it. Entrepreneurship can be a very lonely journey. Even if you have the support of your friends and family, you might not have someone to talk to about your business in particular. A lot of service providers here in Alberta can provide a lot of that assistance to you and want you to succeed. So definitely make sure that you're asking and remember, there are tons of resources, supports, and connections here in Alberta that want to help you succeed in your business aspirations. We hope you found this episode about relationship building and planning your business informative. From our two guests, we learned about how to approach stores you would like to start a relationship with and the importance of having a business plan 